Welcome to Revival Radio TV. I'm Gene Bailey. Listen, have you ever heard people talk about mantles or about the mantle of this preacher on the mantle or I've got the mantle? Well, today we're going to explore mantles, what that really means. And with me today again is Roberts Larry Roberts. Thank Good you for being you here. Yeah. Uh, tell me, you've been working on this. I want to dive right in and give this to you. Tell us about mantles. Well, I'm learning, so I'm going to okay. give you the part that I know and I'm still kind of gathering as it goes. I grew up in the Pentecostal church, and I first remember hearing when someone of the church's elite status would die or a famous minister, they would all cry for a little bit, and then eventually before that moment was over, they'd say, who gets the mantle? So I grew up with that comment growing up and accepting that it was something, but I didn't know what it was. I just knew it was something unique, and the biggest story in the Bible was Elijah and Elisha. Right. And that's where it's actually you see a generational mantle leave one and go to the other, and it's the most detailed mantle transfer that we have in Scripture. And so I thought, well, what is this? And then just the last six to eight months, the Lord's been prompting me to do more teaching on it. Because my philosophy is this, what the Bible talks all about, you preach all about. What it talks a little about, you speak little about. And there's a little about mantles. So I guess it's time for me to speak that little that I know about them. Um, to me, a mantle, how do we define that? And a mantle is more than an anointing. It's more than an impartation. Right. Uh, you can have an impartation, you can have an anointing, and not have a mantle. Like, I grew up around Brother Hagin. I heard Kenneth Hagin preach more than any other preacher in my life. So at times when you see me preach, you can see an anointing that I picked up being in all of those services right. and being prayed And I'm proud that I have it. But I don't have Kenneth Hagin's mantle. I have one little touch or anointing, whatever you want to call it, that I've got that I can feel. I, can, I have it. It was because I was in it. I was yeah. around it and I got it. And, uh, but I don't have the mantle. Now, Lester Summerall, I got what I would call an impartation, more of a, a working thing inside of you, more than yeah. something that's upon you. So I would define the difference between anointing and impartation. So Brother Summerall laid hands on me many times and was a part of my spiritual covering, and I received from him an impartation that still works. And sometimes if you watch him, you can see it come out and it has some of the same mannerisms that he had. So that's really how you can tell if you got something because it'll have certain characteristics right. that most folks don't know unless you've been around and like, mm -hmm, that's what that is. Yeah. Like when you'd see Lester Summerall preach and you'd see Wigglesworth's rude, rudeness and gruffness because people thought, well, Brother Summerall's kind of rude. Well, half of that was Wigglesworth's fault because Wigglesworth prayed for him and he received, I think, an impartation. I don't know if he carried the mantle. Maybe he did, but that word was never used. But when you'd watch Brother Summerall preach, you could see at times he'd flip out there's Smith. You could see that thing come up out of his, his, his abruptness, I would say. Right. And so, you know, Smith was great. He cried for the lost and did all that. But he was gruff. He was tough. Yeah. Like he saw you in a prayer line and he prayed for you last night and you're back in it tonight. He would kick you out of the prayer line because that's unbelief. You know, right. I only pray once. The second time was unbelief. Now, I'm not saying that's a correct for everybody, but for him, that's the way it was. So growing up, hearing the term mantle, and I'm trying to think, well, what it is? And asking people, what's a mantle? Uh, they don't know. So I want to give you a working description of what I believe a spiritual mantle Good, is. Great. That's your I believe it is something that, that uh, engulfs many elements of a person's spiritual dimension. One, the call, a certain work of God that he wants in the earth, he placed on Elijah, he placed on somebody. And over time, a relationship was built between man and God and trust where God could turn up the power of that particular call or grace. And you have that as a part of the mantle. In it, you have anointings, you have impartations, mm -hmm. giftings. You've got I don't know, a degree of an authority that's different than other functions of spiritual endowments. It's a, it's a little more of a dominion-taking authority. It's, it's a right. strong thing. The mantles that I've looked at in the scripture and church history all got national attention. So I'm not saying that's the rule for all of them, but it seems to be a characteristic that when you have that thing, it, it gets the attention. I think within it, uh, you have also um, the mantles, the gifts, and the callings, uh, those, uh, there's authority in it, and that wraps up together, and it fits on a person. And so to me, that's what creates a mantle. It's all those things together. Now, you can have one or two of the others and not have the mantle. Now, uh, in, in the Bible, it says in Kings that when he's asked for a double portion. Right. He says, you asked for a hard thing. He didn't say it was impossible, but he said there is some, some difficulty to this. 
And that's why I think a lot of people will never get a mantle because one, it takes time, number one. Uh, there's a possibility, if I understand scripture right, the relationship between Elijah and Elisha was over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so there was a 10 years of him working alongside of that man, that kind of thing. Not everybody's gonna do that or called to do that, but he did do it, so he was there. Um, Elisha was in pursuit of it. He was told by the prophet, don't follow me. He says, no, I'm coming, and went all the way. Then to, to talk quickly, he says, well, you see me when I go up, you can have it. If you don't see me, you can't have it. Now, when that departure, that rapture came, when Elijah was raptured to heaven, you have a fiery chariot, you've got fiery horses, and Elijah leaving. There's a lot to look at. Yeah. And he said, if you see me, if you look at me, mm, that's good. Then there was, there's a requirement. It's not, a, it's not as easy to get, a, you can get an anointing easier. It's a little more difficult. And so he said, you have to see me. And then Elijah comes back, Elisha does, and he has the mantle, picks it up, and hits the water and splits it across. And then the sons of the prophet see it on him. And so if you have one, you don't have to advertise it. It's obvious to those who know what to look at. They said, hey, the spirit of Elijah's on you. And they bowed themselves down to the ground before him. In other words, they accepted that he had received the mantle, taken the position, and now is that person. And they said yes to it. Right. So that's the story of, of that mantle. Now, the Elisha mantle, that Elijah's mantle, only lasted two generations, and it died on the third one. You got Elijah to Elisha, but to Elisha to Gehazi, we lose. Yeah. And so the story of when they are burying the man and the Moabites are coming to get him, and they got to bury this guy fast, and they throw him in Elisha's grave, sepulcher. Yeah. And when he touched the bones, he stood up and came back to life. Now, we always preach that. What a great story. What a sad story. Because what that is, the mantle had no place to go and was still stuck in the man's grave because Gehazi had messed it up. Mm -hmm. Part of the years that it takes to get it is building human personal character so that you can carry it. The greater the mantle, the greater the character one has to be to carry that thing. And so you have that aspect of it in Scripture. So let's jump into history for a moment. Yeah. Let's talk about, for a moment, the, the great healing mantle that uh, started it with Maria Woodworth Eder. Uh, right. You brought a book. Yeah, this it. is all of her sermons I could find. I put them in a book. It's all of her collections. She was a Pentecostal pioneer, the grandmother of the Pentecostal right. movement, great lady. So that's her. She, the mantle I'm talking about began with her. Right. And so for some reason, God chose her, and she had great miracles that were visible. You could see them. Mm. Plus, the unique thing about her was God had trance, trances a part of her ministry for some yes. reason. I've seen a few in my life, but the way the newspapers and the Christians and she talked, it happens almost in every service in, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, sometimes 40 to 50 people. It'll hit, and they fall into a trance. So it's a very unique thing, but she had, she got national attention. She did well, and she had that anointing. Uh, then when Amy McPherson was in her late 20s, she made her way to Indianapolis, Indiana to see Mother Edder and spent two days with her. Right. Heard her preach on a Wednesday night, was with her on a Thursday and left, I believe, Thursday night, her son told me. And so there was that connection. And in that moment, that mantle that was on Mrs. Edder found its way to begin its life with Sister McPherson. And you can see it doubled. Mm. You can see that here's her crowds, here's her miracles, and Amy takes it to another whole world. Right. When Amy dies, there is a redheaded woman named Catherine Kuhlman in Los Angeles going through the worst time of her life. Her marriage is ending. She tries to go to Amy's Bible school, only goes a half a semester, quits, thinks life is over. And when Catherine would say, I was, the day that Catherine Kuhlman died was the greatest, you know, so yeah, dramatic. dramatic. And so that happened out there, and that mantle that was on Amy fell upon Catherine. When Catherine died, it fell upon the first man named Benny Hinn. So I talked about it. I said, well, Benny, you got it. I mean, if you close your eyes, you think you're in a Catherine Kuhlman service. You're on the stage, the music, the right. whole thing, the way it worked. And he just sat there and looked at you and smiled and wouldn't say much about that. Now, when you have a mantle of someone, you have to know how that thing works within the human person, the human character, the everyday life, how it affects the family, the mindset, everything, and how the devil fights it. Now, with that healing mantle that was Edder McPherson Kuhlman Benning, here's how the devil fights it. He fights them. Every single one of them had divorces. 
Yeah. Every single one had heart issues. Mm -hmm. Some was the reason for their death. And you can see it in every single one of them. So let me talk with, about Benny. So this is public, yep. so I'm not breaking confidence sure. or anything. Sure. He got a divorce. Right. And I used to tell him, I said, Benny, Benny, who carries this has marriage problems and heart issues. Prepare against it. He goes, oh. Da, da, da. Mm. Yeah. He got it now. He didn't get it then. And so he got a divorce. So his wife divorced him. The good thing about the Benny story was that he got remarried and fixed it. Yeah. So you have to give him, hey, hallelujah, you turn that thing around. Because the rest of them, they didn't do that. Right. It didn't work that way for them. So, And then just a few years ago, he was out in California where he was living and had a heart problem, rushed to the Irvine Hospital. I'm like, Benny, this is how the devil fights this. So if you're a mantle receiver or you're in the pulled by God into one of these kind of things, knowing how it functions and works is important, as well as how the devil fights it, how it affects Every one of these mantles that the healing got national attention was loved by the media until the ending part of their life. There's always a little bit of anti-press, but toward the right. end, it really came after them. And so you can see how the devil buffets it that way. And they all wore white, and they sing all about the same songs. Now that's another just observation, yeah. white, 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 white suits. I mean, dresses and bidding just right. a white suit. So that's a mantle that still exists. And, uh, and you can see it very clearly. That way. Another mantle, if I can go, please, go on. Please, yeah, yeah, right. this is interesting. I'm trying to follow the time clock here. No, you're good. But uh, is one that I think we could relate to, too, is uh, the Reinhardt Bunky ministry. Right. Um, most people in this country would not know the name George Jeffries. Right. But he was at the time that Wigglesworth was alive in Great Britain. Jeffries had a bigger voice and ministry in England than Wigglesworth did. Now, Jeffries was called to the British Isles and he mainly stayed in England. He would come to LA and a few things, but nothing that made any notoriety. Right. Wigglesworth, after his wife died, became the worldwide guy that we all talk about. So you're not 50 and finish, you're 50 and starting all over like Wigglesworth did and he right. became the guy that we all admire today. So Reinhard Bunke finishes Bible school in the Bible School of Wales. And so he wanted to go around and see London before he got on the train that night or the next day to head back to Germany to be with his family. So he gets, the, he buys a ticket of on the bus, off the bus, you know, that, that ticket you have over there. So he gets on the bus and rides around and he gets tired of sitting. And so he gets off and walks, he wants to take a walk. And he walks down this road in London and on a mailbox, the name Jeffries is written. And he stops and he goes, I wonder if that's the famous George Jeffries because he thought he was dead. Yeah. You know, he'd read the books, heard the stories, but, right. you know, that guy's already gone. But, you know, like most young people would, well, let's check it out. So he goes and knocks <laughs> on the door, you know, and the lady that's, I guess, the maid in the house right. answers the door. And, and he goes, is this the home of the famous George Jeffries, the healing evangelist? Yes. So he gets excited a little. And is he alive? Is he here? Yes. Can I see? No. And so the lady was, he was, okay, uh, please. And a booming voice comes down the staircase. It was George Jeffrey. He goes, let him in. If you know it's the sound of his voice, right. let him in. And so he walks into the front of George Jeffrey's house and talks nervously like a young preacher or young man would. Da, 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 talks. And then George prays for him and asks God to give him his spirit anointing, that kind of thing. And, and then Bonky never takes his coat off, never takes off, just gets back up, thank you, and leaves. Happy, he's finished Bible school, been blessed by the famous George Jeffrey. Great, great, great. He goes to Germany, and lands there, and his dad picks him at the train station and says, we just heard that George Jeffrey died last night. And, and Bonke goes, no, 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 no. I was with him last night. He got the blessing six to eight hours before he died. Wow. And so when you see Reinhard Bonke's crusades in Africa, the big healing campaigns, what you see is the double or the quadrupling of the mantle that George Jeffrey carried. George Jeffries had two sides to his mantle, right. the healing evangelism and the church planting side. I think he started over 100 and, what, 30, 40 churches before he died. And so he built a denomination that's still good and liable in, in England called the Elam Foursquare, yeah. the Elam right. Group. Great guys. They were, when I lived there, they treated me well, and I almost became an Elam guy. They were so nice to me. And so this is who he was. And so the other side of George Jeffries' mantle fell upon the church that he pastored, the last church he pastored called Kensington Temple. Mm. That church has produced almost the same amount of ministries that the denomination produced. 
Wow. The men on that. At one time, and it still may be true today, every great church and every small church that was spirit-filled in London had come or been touched by KT. You could, they would track yeah. all the back. It was a womb of that man that produced preachers and produced ministries for the world and for London. So that thing fell like that. So that's another living man on today. Now, hopefully it falls on Daniel Kalinda, the successor of Bunky. I think he has a great anointing. We'll see if it's an anointing or a mantle as time passes. A little side note. Daniel Kalinda's great ancestors was Peter Cartwright. Mm. So you've got a Bonky and a Cartwright combination coming, possibly, with the, the, the Daniel Kalinda thing. And so you, you, you see that. So when you are... Explain to everybody watching who Cartwright was. Peter Cartwright was a young Methodist preacher during the early days of the frontier, the Daniel Boone kind of era. Right. And uh, he got saved as a kid and became the youngest frontier Methodist circuit writer. And I call him the pistol-toting uh, preacher. He had the Bible and his gun. So sometimes he had to shoot his gun off to scare the Indians away from or cause the people in the town that were trying to cause trouble to leave. So he'd be, God loves you, bam, bam. And so those are the kind of things. <laughs> so that's the kind of the story for us. He has great stories. The book that was written about his life called The Backwoods Preacher uh, talks about him being led by the Spirit and going to these towns and God doing things. and having, Back then they had the jerks. Yeah. So the jerks was the big thing. When the power failed, they all jerked. And so people thought that he was giving people the jerks and try to you know, beat him up. You gave my sister the jerks. We're going to beat you up. He said, if I gave it to her, I'll give it to you. And they ran off. So you have those fun stories about Peter Cartwright. So to me, it's exciting to see the hope maybe inside of Daniel is that wild Cartwright side combined with that great healing mantle that came from Jeffries and double wow. the bonky and see yeah. what it can do next. And he's just started yeah. He's just begun. So we need to pray for him that the enemy does not entrap him or snare him, but he can just move. We need to pray for our leaders, yeah. our young leaders. It's nice to give them money. It's nice to go rob their meetings, but please pray for their soul, pray for their ministries to keep them on that a highway that is right for their life. Uh, when you're having a mental situation, you have to know how to follow. Uh, Paul said, follow me as I follow the Lord. So it implies, if I'm not following the Lord, don't follow me. You can follow someone so close you pick up on the problems. Yes. You pick up on the mistakes. And that is so true when you see people that, that were actually moved by God to follow someone in the line of a mantle receptivity. They pick up the same alcohol problem. All right. Or the same moral issue or the attitude toward me. It's almost like, hello? You stop following. Like people today love Brother Branham. And I like William Branham. He's sure. probably the greatest prophet for four or 500 years. I mean, we've got some good ones today, but still none like Brother Branham. I mean, his yeah. gifting was just amazing. And so, but you have to know when to quit following him. Mm -hmm. When he tries to be a Bible teacher instead of a signs of wonder of prophet, you stop. You don't keep going. So these young prophetic people, oh, and they keep following. And I'm like, you never asked me what went wrong. All you want to know is about this. I said, you better know this too because you'll pick up on the mistakes. Then the other aspect of that is how to honor. Honoring the person with whom you're around is important. But God only allots double honor as the highest honor that we grant a fellow servant of the Lord in our life. So if you go beyond double, you've now created idolatry. If you go beyond double honor, You've now created, you're stealing mm. the glory that belongs to God. Mm, interesting. You're taking it. So there's a way you have to honor, because a lot of honor talk today, which I think is important, but I think we have to know how. He only allots double honor. That's it. For, for Or Roberts, for Brother Hagen, for all the people we admire, Brother Kuhl, uh, Sister Kuhl, double honor, that's it. If you go beyond that, you're taking what belongs to him, and he don't share glory or vengeance with people. So we have to know how to honor and stay right there. I was in Africa, and the African culture is a very honoring culture more yes. than most. That's the true. age in the African culture is very strong, especially inside the church. Now, I want to say this, and everybody can judge it, but they may have crossed to some level beyond double on how they treat their great leaders. Not taking away who they are, not taking away what they're doing for God and who they stand and what they represent, but God only allows us to give double honor. And if you don't keep it right in the world of manners, you mess the thing up. And so it's a, it's a bigger picture than just, oh, I got somebody's anointing. Well, I'm glad you got it. Yeah. 
but you don't have the mantle. The mantle's a little bit bigger. Does all that make sense? Yes, it does. So, I, I can, people are sitting there wondering, well, so is it okay to ask for someone's mantle? Should we seek a mantle? I, yes and no. I think out of sincerity and, and, and honesty, like I've always said, I like Catherine Kuhlman's mantle. Sure. Benny's got it, so it's already gone. So it's not going to come to me. But I asked, and it was gone. And so you have to accept the reality. You may ask and not get it. Yeah. But you may ask and get it. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be willing to be the next carrier to lose a lot of your ambitious identity of what you wanted to do in ministry because now you're right. fulfilling not that person's uh, desire, but the man on which they were carrying, the God deposit. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's the God deposit. So we call it after the name who carried it, but actually it is a certain work of the spirit in the earth that individuals have carried and it is to be transferred. Now, back to Elisha, the mantle that he had, the Elijah mantle, stayed in the bones of Elisha. I think there are anointings or mantles that are dormant that God wants to resurrect in these last days. Now, how that all happens, I have a small idea. I don't know all, I'm still learning. But there's something here about the increase of anointings, impartations, and the world of mantles is going to play a role in some of our last day activity. Um, people say, well, I've got so-and-so's mantle. No, you don't. If you have it, it shows up. What you may have is an anointing from or some type of thought thing you caught in the spirit, whether right. that's, use it, have it, don't, don't. Yes, it's real. But know the difference between that and a mantle. And let's pray that God will give to those uh, those who need it and to care it because there's dormant ones that need to come back. The only the two that are the most dominant in America is the healing one I explained, right, and the one that Billy Graham set in, but no one has picked up where he left off. There's a there's a there's a salvation mantle in America that sits real close to the White House. It began with George Whitfield, yes, and it journeyed down, and he gave the great statement. We call it a prophetic statement: "One nation under God," and it becomes a part of our identity and our slogan on our money. That's right. And comes from the, the gospel preacher. He helped carve out in the American national psyche that having a man of God next to the president or next to the power guy is the way it should be. And when you read American history, you can see when those people showed up and when they weren't showed up. In our lifetime, the one that sat there in our lifetime was Billy Graham, and he did an amazing job. He did it well privately and publicly. 215 million people he preached to in person before he died. That's more than all of us put together. Yeah, I mean, true. does it count as TV shows <clears throat> and all that stuff? That's live and in person. And so he sat in that seat next to the president. They call him the president's pastor. I got, I got pictures of all the presidents he was with. That is a mantle in this nation. Right now, it's not being filled. Mm. I hope somebody that God will, has tapped their shoulder will say yes. Yeah. I think there's been a couple he's tapped and they've said no. And it brings me back to the Kuhlman. I was God's third, fourth choice. Yeah, that's right. And I'm thinking, this thing right here may be God's third, fourth choice to find the one that says yes. I, I, I don't like that. Yeah. But it's like, we need that office field right now in our country. It would solve a lot of our problems. Right. But the voice of the Lord and the man of God or the woman of God is not there. And so that whole world is working on just their own intellect, their self understandings, and the flow of the demonic, and and, our, and, the, and they're just, they're flowing. There's no hello, and so so what about Franklin Graham? He's the son. He's not the carrier. A lot of people think because I'm the biological child, I right. have it. Well, once in a while it's true. Most of the time it's not. What most of the kids have are anointings, impartations, even if they keep them. Right. Some of them don't even acknowledge it. It's it's shocking to me. I should write a book on what happens to the kids when the great guys die. Yeah. Because someone's like, what are you smoking? Yeah. Come on, get this thing moving. And, and it's almost like some of the sons get upset and it's their day. Yeah, that's It's right. my day. My, it, that was my dad, I'm this. Well, brother, you are the son of that person and that's never gonna change. And you will never be your dad. So why don't you bless them? Why don't you honor them? And do what you're called to do Tell the story of your dad. Get up there and do your thing and let it roll. <clears throat> and well, you receive it. But they, they cut them off. 
And that's almost a attack of the enemy to loosen that anointing from the earth. That's right. All right, so let's wrap. We've got a couple minutes left. So I want you to pray for the people watching, Roberts, because this is what you've just quickly glossed over, and I know you're doing a lot more research, is the single thing I hear the most from people that are ministers, or male and female, that they're saying, I want, I feel like I'm this, I feel like I'm that. And like we were talking about before the program, my, my, the extent of my knowledge with mantles is if you say you've got it, you probably don't. That's you true. Know? And that's because usually you're going, hmm, no, <laughs> you're nowhere near that. It's noticeable. It's noticeable. So I, I believe we have to, and you said something earlier, and I want you to go back to this, is that you have, it, uh, mantles take a longer period of time. Yeah. The character that has to be developed. So when you're asking for something, and we all want God to use us. We all want, as a believer, we want yeah. to see God use us in a new way, in, in a way like when we look at Catherine or uh, Maria Woodworth Edder or, or Billy Graham. We see that and we want that, mm -hmm. but we don't really know, and what you've done with God's generals so well is we don't know the whole story. Mm -hmm. And even some things these people took to their graves with them yeah. that they just would not talk about um, what it cost them. Yeah. Um, it became sacred. became sacred. So as we go, I want you to pray for people about this so that they seek God first and then let the mantles fall where they may. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that we, as we move into this end time with anointings and partitions and the world of mantles coming alive again, let us have a revelation of it. And those whom you've called to carry certain mantles, let them wake up and go for it and be able to walk in the path that is supposed to, to receive it. Father, for them that have assumed something that you've not given them, let that also be arrested and removed from the person's conscience and person's pursuit, that they may be on the right road and not on the wrong road. Father, we realize not everybody has a mantle, but we all can receive anointings and impartations. Let those things roll into our lives, roll into our churches. But the mantle world, as you begin to do it again, let us be able to walk with great integrity and be able to carry those things successfully through our time. I pray that for you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good stuff. Listen, we're going to do so much more here on Revival Radio TV. We've got so many things we still haven't covered yet. So you need to stay tuned every week right here as we bring Revival back to you. Thanks, Roberts, for being here. Thanks for having me. We'll see you next time on Revival Radio TV.